What is up guys, welcome back. We just got done installing the AFE GT Momentum air intakes on the TRD Pro. I'm gonna give you guys some sound clips, sound comparisons versus stock. I know that's what everybody's gonna to wanna to see. I'll show you how to get them installed. It's very, very simple to do, extremely easy. Anybody could do it, honestly. Um, but then again, we'll give you some sound clips, sound comparisons versus stock at the end of the video. I did take several different comparisons just for you guys. I know that's gonna be you know, one of the most popular questions is how do they sound? You guys can hear it for yourself. Hopefully turns out this is kind of a part one of a two-part um, video we're going to be doing the afe charge pipes as well we already have them in the garage this time we just did the intakes um, just in case you wanted to see only the intakes that's why i kind of broke it up into two different videos so let me show you what's in the box we'll jump into the install and then i'll give you the sound clips quick look at what comes in the box so you have your passenger side and your driver side um, housing you have your two tubes right there they are a little different it doesn't matter which one they go and i'll show you how to differentiate four hose clamps um two of there's two different sizes those two are the same size those two are the same size couplings you have a couple rubber caps right there that you can see i'll show you where they go and stay tuned i'm actually going to be doing a little something different in the future um we'll go into a little bit more detail on that uh throughout this video some gaskets again i'll show you where they go we went with the dry filtered option right there um they do offer this in the oiled um version i was actually going to get the oiled but they weren't in stock and it was like a ridiculous wait time i could always change them out in the future bag of four screws some decals alcohol pads and instructions all right, let's start on the passenger side here. I did disconnect the negative side of the battery. Anytime I'm working with wiring harnesses, um, anything like that on these trucks nowadays, I do always disconnect the negative side of the battery. Instructions don't say you have to, I recommend doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to our MAF sensor right here. And you may need, needle nose pliers actually makes this easier because it does, it's on there pretty good. So we're just gonna go ahead and undo it from our air, uh, from the tube. And then we have to unclip it from this location right here. The easiest way to do this, small flathead screwdriver, get it right down here in that crease, pull out, hopefully my hand's not in the way, and then pop it up like so, okay? We're just gonna set that aside. Next, we're gonna loosen this clamp right here. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver, as you can see on the top there, or I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter. We're just gonna go ahead and loosen that. Now we can loosen the tubing right here and lift the air box out of the truck. Go ahead and pop that off there. So you can see it's only held in with these grommets. There's no bolts or anything um, like the older trucks. They were actually held in with bolts. Just lifts out just like that. Now that we have it out of the truck, what we have to do is the three grommets that was attaching it underneath the hood. We need to go ahead and take those out of the stock box. So you can see they just pull out like that. Do that with all three of them. Then we take our new housing and again, we're doing the passenger side. The, the instructions are re really good with labeling these, but if you look on the back, there's actually a part number. The one that ends in B4 right there. I don't know if you can see it, but again, you can't miss it. Um, that is the passenger housing. You also can't really screw it up because they're not going to go in the truck any other way. So we're going to take those three grommets that we just removed and we're going to go ahead and pop them in the three larger holes right here on the new box. Coming back to the passenger side stock box, we do have to go ahead and take the MAF sensor out of the, the tubing. Just held in by a couple Phillips head screws. Once you have it out, you're gonna take your fact, or I'm sorry, your passenger side tubing. You know it's the passenger, it has a right um, engraved on it there. I'm not sure if you can see it there, but right is always considered passenger side, but you can't miss it on the back there. So you're gonna take it, you can see the orientation we have it. Um, you can see the AFE logo right there. When you're putting your MAF sensor in this, you wanna make sure it lines up. You can see which way the plug is facing. You wanna line it up like that. Okay, and you are not gonna use the factory screws here. They do provide four screws. So you're gonna take two of them, obviously. There, you need a T20 bit. So we're just gonna take two of the screws and secure the MAF sensor to the new tubing. All right, so now we can start prepping it for install on the truck. So you wanna take your, um, your housing, take one of your gaskets. Again, these two gaskets are different, obviously. One for the driver, one for the passenger. So when you're looking at the housing, 
you're gonna put it on this side right here and just make sure you are using the correct one. You can see it lines up like that. So before we attach it, they do supply alcohol pads. We're just gonna wipe the area down with an alcohol pad to make sure the gasket sticks. All right, make sure that's good and dry. Then we can take our gasket. Again, just make sure we have it in the right orientation there. Peel the backing off and line it up around this opening. Push it down, make sure it's nice and intact. Take your time going around the edge there, line it up the best you can. It does fit perfect if you take your time and get it on there. Next step to prepping the housing is you wanna take one of these rubber caps that they send and we're gonna pop it in the front of the air box. What this is gonna do is when you, when you get this installed in the truck, this right here is gonna stop warm air from getting into the intake into the box. Um, we all know warm air, not a friend, you're gonna lose a little performance. I am gonna do something a little bit different right here though in the future, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on that bell. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna cap it for right now, like they call for it, but I am gonna do something different with this in the future. So you're just gonna simply pop the plug in, goes in just like that, okay? Next, we're gonna take one of the filters and we're gonna install it before we put the housing in the truck just to make it easier. So we're simply just gonna take it like so, drop it in and then push it down. Make sure it's sealed into the housing like so. All right, we're now ready to pop it into the engine bay. So what we're gonna do Three, the three grommets that we took out of the factory box and put into the new box. There's three pins inside the engine bay. We'll give you a quick look. So there's one here, one here, and one here. That's where those grommets are gonna sit over. So you basically just have to line them up and you're not gonna be able to see well what you're doing, <laughs> just so you know, but just do your best, line them up and those grommets will pop right down onto those three pins. All right, now we're gonna take one of the couplings, looks like that. You're gonna take one of the bigger hose clamps, put it over the front like so, and we're not gonna tighten these down. We're just gonna kinda get them tight enough where they're not gonna fall off the coupling on us, but you don't wanna snug these down just yet because we're gonna be putting these in the truck. So, so you can see it still easily turns, but it's not gonna fall off if I turn it upside down. All right, so that's where the bigger one goes. Then you're gonna take one of the smaller hose clamps and put it in that area there. Same thing, we're just gonna snug it so it doesn't fall off on us. All right, so again, you can see, you can spin it, but it's not tight. So we'll, that'll allow us to put it in the truck. Let me show you where this goes. All right, so we're gonna take the coupling and where we detached the factory, um, how, or I'm sorry, the factory tubing, that's where we're gonna put the smaller end of the coupling. So just kind of work it on there. Now we can take the passenger side tubing, MAF sensor installed, and this is pretty much self-explanatory. It's gonna be going in this area here. And you may have to twist the coupling. Um, basically, you want your tubing with the, with the MAF sensor on the very top. Okay, so just kinda, if you have to, you know, twist your coupler or, you know, whatever you gotta do. I think it's probably gonna be easiest, and we're gonna learn this together, if we, insert the filter end first and then sneak that down. Yeah, that's actually not too bad at all. So if you put the, um, the filter end in first and then come down and you kind of just have to work with it a little bit, I'm gonna loosen that clamp. All right, so once you have everything lined up properly, and again, I did have to kind of twist the coupler a little bit, um, but you can see how it's sitting. The AFE power emblem on the tube is straight up. MAF sensors is on the very top. The um, Make sure you have this twisted properly. Even if it's just a little bit off, you might end up with a gap 
within your seal of the filter. So you wanna just make sure everything is snug, everything is lined up properly, and there's no twisting or, or anything like that. So air can, um, so warm air can get into the box. Once you have it in position properly and everything is ready to go, we're just gonna come back and tighten all three hose clamps, the two that we put on the coupler, and then the filter actually has one on it as well that comes on the filter. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten down all three clamps and we're ready to move on to the next step. Don't forget to plug your MAF back in. And that concludes the passenger side. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the driver side. It's basically the same exact process, just looks a little different, that's all. So we'll take you over here real quick. So when you're looking at the driver side, here's your MAF. There's that clip right there that you have to undo to release the wiring harness. That's the bolt that you have to loosen. Once you do that, you could pop this box out and just repeat all the same steps. Again, I'm not gonna waste time. I kinda wanna wrap the video up. I don't want this one to go too long. Um, I wanna give you those sound clips and everything at the end of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. If I come across anything doing the driver's side, I'll make sure I note it in the video. But again, pretty straightforward, same exact process. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that driver's side installed. All right, guys, driver's side is in very, very straightforward. There's honestly not many tips I can give you. It is the same exact process just on the driver's side. Um, again, once you get that coupler on, you can see kind of how they're orientated. Just get it in that general, you know, area or orientation and then you might have to twist it a little bit just make sure your seals are pressed up against the the box tight just make sure they're you know all of the edges of the rubber seals on both ends are nice and tight and secure um, if this is twisted the wrong way you might notice that your gasket here from your filter might be popping up a little bit so just double check that make sure everything is nice and you know nice and secure nice and flat up against the box but again driver side literally the exact same process you can't mess it this is such an easy install um so what we're going to do now give you some sound clips um you know stock versus these new afe intakes now i will mention one thing as you saw we have these rubber caps on that is going to quiet them down just a little bit so just keep that in mind you can see we have them on both sides if you take those out as i mentioned earlier you're gonna get some warmer air in those boxes and that's not really a good thing. Warm air for intakes, it just, you know, it could decrease performance a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you do take those out, you'll get a little extra noise, but you may be sacrificing just a little bit of performance. Stay tuned for what I'm gonna do with those in the future. I mentioned it a couple times, but I do have plans for those spots. All right, let's go out, give you some sound clips and we'll wrap this up. guys hopefully you found this helpful and i really hope that that noise shows up on camera i know stuff like that isn't always the easiest to catch on audio but you can definitely hear these intakes you hear a little bit of extra I want to say wind noise, but that's not the right way to describe it. It's a good wind noise, I guess. Uh, it's even, you hear a little bit of a whistle. You hear the turbos a little bit more. Um, you know, it's definitely, it sounds pretty good in my opinion. So as far as performance, I can't really speak on that just yet. I mean, I did take it for a ride and, you know, it, 
it feels like it picks up a little bit better, but we all know it might be a placebo effect. I, I don't know. You know, I can't really speak on that just yet. I really wish I was able to get it on a dyno for you guys to have solid proof. But stay tuned. We'll be doing that charge pipe install. And, you know, by then maybe I'll have a little bit better feedback, you know, as far as performance goes. First impressions, I definitely like them. I'm glad I got them. I would recommend them, absolutely. Um, you know, I know there's going to be questions about that, but... You know, if you guys have any questions on the install, let me know. It's very, very easy and straightforward. As you saw, anybody can do this install. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you out. And, uh, yeah, I hope that audio turned out for you and it gives you a pretty good idea of what to expect with these things. Questions, comments, concerns, put them down below. We'll get them addressed. Stay tuned for the charge pipe install. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.